Okay, so we're going to prove that if A is a set with n elements, then the power set of A has 2 to the n elements. And we're going to do this by proof by mathematical induction. So proof by PMI. And with um, principle of mathematical induction, we need to first do a base, a step, to illustrate that this at least works for the first um, term or um, several other terms after to give us an idea of how to do the inductive step. Okay, so the first one we'll do is uh, where A has zero elements, so we'll let N equals zero. So this means that A sub naught, that's what we'll call um, A sub naught, is uh, the empty set. We'll call um, this set that's empty A sub naught. So this implies that the power set of A sub naught is equal to the second containing the empty set. So we have that the cardinality of a sub naught, or the number of elements in a sub naught, is equal to zero. And this implies that the cardinality of the power set of a sub naught is equal to one. And we know that this is equal to two to the zero. Because if we have a has zero elements, we want to show that the cardinality of the power set of a would have two to the zero elements. And we've done that here. Let's go ahead and check for n is equal to 1. And we'll call this set a sub 1 with one element in it, say a sub 1, right? This implies that the power set of a sub 1 is equal to, so we're going to have the empty set, and we're going to have the second containing a sub 1. So the way the power set works, and that's going to be really useful in this proof, is we can always develop the power set of the next one using the previous one, union the next term. Notice that the power set of a sub one has the empty set, right? And it's a sub one union, the empty set gave us a sub one, okay? And uh, we'll show this with um, n equals two and n equals three, just to give you an idea of how we're gonna do the inductive step. So we have the cardinality of a sub one, is equal to one, and this implies that the cardinality of the power set of a sub one is equal to uh, two, right? And of course that is equal to two to the one. So if we have one element in set A, then we have two to the one elements in the power set of a sub one. So that's how it goes, right? So that uh, works out. So now let's try n equal two, and we'll let a sub two equal the second containing a sub one and a sub two. Okay, so now we have uh, this implies that the power set of a sub two is equal to. So remember, we're going to use a sub one. We know that we have the empty set and the second containing a sub one. And now we're going to um, do union and then the new set we're doing here. So the empty set union a sub two would just be a sub two, right? The second containing a sub two. And now a sub one union a sub two, right? Will give us a sub one, a sub two. And that gives us all of the elements in the power set of a sub two. So we have the cardinality of a sub two is equal to two. And this implies that the cardinality of the power set of a sub two is equal to four, which is of course two squared. So it checks out. Now let's look at n equals three, okay? And this will be the last one we do just to give you um, really an idea of what's going on here. So we have a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, okay? So this means, this implies that the power set of a sub three, right? So we're gonna use all the ones from um, a sub two. So we're gonna have the empty set, a sub one, a sub two, um, a sub one, a sub two. And now we're gonna do a sub three union the empty set would be a sub three. We're gonna do a sub three union um, a sub one, which would give us um, a sub one, a sub three. We're gonna do a sub two union a sub three. So it's gonna be a sub two, a sub three, right? And we're gonna have um, a sub three um, union these guys, right? So it's gonna be a sub one, 
a sub 2, a sub 3, right? So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and we just used the four terms from, or the four um, elements from the previous one, and we did the union of the new element to get our new set of elements, right? So we have that the cardinality of a sub 3 is equal to 3, and this implies that the cardinality of the power set of a sub 3 is equal to 8, which is, of course, 2 cubed. So that checks out. Now we're going to move on to the inductive step. Okay, so um, inductive step. So we're going to let k be a natural number and let a sub k equal a sub 1, a sub 2, dot, 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 all the way to a sub k, right? Basically, um, a sub k is going to represent a set with k elements, and we're going to look at a sub k plus 1 to be a set with um, k plus 1 elements, right? a sub k and a sub k plus 1, right? Okay, so the way inductive um, the inductive step works is we're going to assume that if we have um, a sub k has k elements, then the cardinality of the power set of a sub k would have 2 to the k elements. And assuming that, we want to prove that if a sub k plus 1 has k plus 1 elements, then the, um, the cardinality of the power set of a sub k plus 1 would have 2 to the k plus 1 elements. Okay, so we're going to assume the cardinality of the power set of a sub k is equal to 2 to the k, okay? So um, then we have that the power set of a sub k, right, has elements b sub 1, b sub 2, dot, 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 b sub 2 to the k, right? So it has 2 to the k elements, where b, all these b's are subsets of a sub k, right? Because that's the definition of the power set. So we're going to put that here, where uh, b sub 1, we're going to let b sub 1 be the empty set, and uh, b sub i is a subset of a sub k, of course, for um, 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to 2 to the k. So basically, this is saying that all of these um, b's here, from 1 to 2 to the k are all subsets of a sub k, right? And we know that the power set tells us that there's going to be um, 2 to the k, or we're assuming that there's going to be 2 to the k of these subsets, right? For the power set of a sub k. So now we're going to look at, so this implies that the power set of a sub k plus 1, right, is equal to, so it's going to be b sub 1, all the way to b sub 2 to the k, and we're going to use that same reasoning we did in the um, in these terms over here in our base step, right? Where we had um, these original uh, four, right? From our previous term, from our previous um, a sub 2 to a sub 3, from our previous one. And then we're going to do the union of all of these guys to get these new guys, right? So we know that this is going to be b sub 1. So it'll be b sub 1, union a sub k plus 1, right? Basically, the empty set union a sub k plus 1, dot, 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 uh, b sub 2 to the k, union a sub k plus 1, right? Because we know that the power set of a sub k plus 1 is going to have these uh, subsets here, and then it's just going to be those same subsets, but it's going to be union with that new element, a sub k plus 1, which is the new element um, in a sub k plus 1 from a sub k, right? We have up to a sub k, and then we're just adding that a sub k plus 1, okay? So um, this implies that the power set of a sub k plus 1 is equal to, so notice, this is the same thing as, b sub 1, dot, 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 b 
b sub 2 to the k union of b sub 1 union a sub k plus 1 dot 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 b sub 2 to the k union a sub k plus 1. Well, these are two disjoint sets, right? Because neither one of them share elements, right? This is b sub 1 and this is b sub 1 union a sub k plus 1. So these are actually different elements and all of these are different from these. So we know this implies that the cardinality of the power set of a sub k plus 1. So since these are um, disjoint sets, that means that this is the same as the cardinality of b sub 1 dot 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 b sub 2 to the k, right? Plus b sub 1 union a sub k plus 1 um, b sub 2 to the k union a sub k plus 1, right? So we know since these are disjoint that the cardinality is going to be the number in this set, right? Plus the number in this set. And of course, we know the number in this set is 2 to the k, right? And we know the number of this set is also 2 to the k because it's these b sub 1 all the way to b sub 2 to the k and you just union the a sub k plus 1. So it's 2 to the k, which now we know that there's two of these. So this is 2 times 2 to the k. And we know this is just 2 to the k plus 1. So we assume that um, if a sub k has k elements, then the cardinality of um, the power set of a sub k is 2 to the k. And from that, we're able to say, OK, if a sub k plus 1 has k plus 1 elements, then we know that the power set of a sub k plus 1 would have 2 to the k plus 1 elements, right? Thus, we have. If we have um, a sub k plus 1 equals k plus 1, right, has k plus 1 elements, this implies that the power set of a sub k plus 1 has 2 to the k plus 1 elements, right? Therefore, uh, by PMI, if a has n elements, then the power set of A has um, 2 to the n elements, right, by the principle of mathematical induction. And that is the proof of this really neat theorem.